Good evening, Archaim Minyan, and thank you to Jeffrey Dorfman for organizing such an incredible initiative. We've missed so many weeks of a seven minute of our Torah that eight nights of a seven minute of our Torah each night, what a fabulous idea. Hopefully, we'll all gain from this learning together as a shul community. And it is my privilege really to open things up with a great question that Rabbi Soloveitchik asks both on this week's Parsha, Parsha Vayeshev, and a Gemara in Shabbos, specifically on Daf, Chof Bet, Amud Aleph. The Gemara there is talking about the sugyot, the topics of Hanukkah. And in the context of the topics of Hanukkah, the Gemara takes a break in the middle of discussing these topics to bring a drasha. The Gemara says the following, Amar of Kahana, Darash Rav Natan Bar Min Yuma Mishmei de Rav Tanchum. Rav Natan Bar Min Yuma explains in the name of Rav Tanchum, Mai Dechtiv, quotes a Pasuk from this week's Parsha, Vahabor Reik Ein Bo Mayim. Again, we know where this comes from, story of Yosef when he's thrown in the pit by the brothers. The Torah tells us that the pit was empty, and then the Torah repeats the phrase, Ein Bo Mayim, to emphasize that there was no water in it. Now says the Gemara, Bimash Vashinem or Vahabor Reik, it says it's rake. It says it's empty. Of course I know that there's no water. Why do you need to tell me this? Why the extra information completely superfluous on every level? Why does it teach us that there's no water? It says the Gemara, because there was no water. But there were snakes and scorpions contained, of course, inside of this pit. And the Torah is, in effect, emphasizing that it may not necessarily be any water, but that doesn't mean it's, emphasis, that doesn't mean it's empty. So Rabbi Soloveitchik said this is very strange. Right before this Gemara, the Gemara says, Ne'er shel Chanaka she'hinicha l'malam esrim ama p'sula. Right? Gemara tells us the case of a Ne'er shel Chanaka that's above 20 amot is pasul, like sukkah, like Mavoy, that's the case right before. The case right afterwards, Ner Chanaka Mitzvah Niv Petach Smucha the Petach, right? That uh, the Gemara tells us about where to put the Nerot. Why is this Joshua right in the middle of the Sugyot of Chanukah? And what is it meant to teach? So Rabbi Salavechik said a beautiful idea. He said, in many ways, the connection between Chanukah and this Gemara is very clear because the Greeks were not interested in physically killing the Jewish people. They wanted to destroy us on a spiritual level. They wanted to take away our connection to Torah and mitzvot. There were many people, though, within the Jewish community who said, okay, not such a bad thing, so terrible, so we won't learn Torah, so there are certain mitzvahs we won't fulfill. No, no, not such a big deal, not such a bad thing. We have to save ourselves. We have to look after ourselves, so we'll give up on these mitzvot. But Rabbi Soloveitchik says, is it possible to maintain Judaism without learning Torah? What will happen? A world devoid of Torah, there won't just be a world without Torah. It will be filled by other negative, terrible influences. Think about religious growth in this world. Think about what happens if a person stops growing religiously. Do they stay the same? Of course not. They start to decline. They start to go down. Torah is meant not just to help keep us connected to a Kaddish Baruch Hu, but to fill a void in time, in our world, in our lives, to help us grow. Now therein presents an incredible challenge in the context of COVID and the fact that our wonderful minion that we love so much has been operating at such a reduced capacity for so many months. We haven't had the shiurim. We haven't had the learning. We haven't had the ability to listen to seven minute divrei Torah. We haven't had the shiurim after davening, even our minyanim being stuck at 10 people and kept to limits. It decreases our ability to grow as a shul and as a community. But that's why we have to look for other opportunities. Rabbi Soloveitchik says that when the Torah writes for Haborei Gein Bomayim, or at least for Joshua and the Gemara based on the Pasuk, what in effect it's teaching us is that if the pit is empty and there is no water, it won't just stay empty. It will be filled up by snakes and scorpions. And our lives too, if they are left without Torah, they won't just be without, with, devoid of Torah, without the positive influence and the positive impact of Torah, but they will be filled up by negative influences. They will be filled up by negative aspects. 
of morals and ethics that we don't want to be within our lives. So in a world of COVID, in which it's so much harder to gather as a community, we have to look for other opportunities. And what a beautiful idea on Hanukkah to take seven minutes every single evening, right before we light or just after we light, listen to these different seven minute divrei Torah, one for each night sent out by our minion to help fill that void, to help fill that gap, to help fill up our world with even more Torah. Please God, the lights of Hanukkah should bring about not only Nisim on the world scale, such that the COVID pandemic will end, but hopefully it will bring about Nisim on a personal level to all of us. We all can't wait to be back together again in the Orchai Minyan, in our Beit Midrash, together again as a community. And please God, the holiday of Hanukkah should help usher that and help that to come about as quickly as possible. Chag Sameach to you all.